Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Moments ago, we heard a beautiful recitation by our Sheikh Ismail. He chose to recite Surat Yusuf. And amazingly, I was pondering this afternoon what I should speak about, seeing that we have people from a cross section of the community. And I was thinking about Surah Yusuf for many reasons. When I heard him opening with Alif Lam Ra, I said, this is a sign. Let's go for it. May Allah grant us ease. I want to tell you, my beloved brothers, my dearest sisters, who may see this a little bit later. Allah Almighty makes mention of the stories of the prophets in the Quran for a purpose. Allah says to Muhammad, peace be upon him. Every time we mention a story of the messengers before you to you, it is in order to strengthen you and your heart, not to say it was not strong, but the lesson is for all of us, the followers of those messengers to learn lesson from. It will apply in our lives. So Allah says the stories that we mention from the best from among them is the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And the reason he says this is because it's a complete story. It will apply in your lives and in mine. And so Allah Almighty starts off by telling us that Yusuf alayhi salam had a dream. His father was a messenger who was also the son of a messenger, who was the son of another messenger, who was the friend of Allah. What was his name, this friend of Allah? Can you say it? Ibrahim. Abraham, may peace be upon him. Allah mentions him in the Quran so many times and Allah says, Indeed, Allah Almighty has taken Ibrahim as a friend. Allah Almighty has taken Ibrahim as a friend. Why? What was the reason? What's the purpose? Why did Allah say Abraham, may peace be upon him, was a friend? And by the way, it's the same Abraham mentioned in the Old Testament, the same Abraham mentioned by the Jews and the Christians, the same Abraham we mention as Muslims. So we are all connected to Abraham, to Solomon, to David, not just the Jews, not just the Christians, all of us. All of us are part of the followers of these great men whom Allah sent to us to guide us, to remove us from the darkness and to show us the light so that we can tread upon that light. It's not just something that belongs to the Jews, as some people think when we speak about Moses, may peace be upon him, he belongs to us. He belongs to the Christians. He belongs to the Jews in the sense that we all follow these great men and their messages are important to us because the messages who came thereafter had a completion of these messages. It is amazing. Unfortunately, people think when you talk about Moses, you're talking about the Jews. When you talk about Jesus, may peace be upon him, you're talking about the Christians. And when you're talking about Muhammad, peace be upon him, you're talking about the Muslims. That's not accurate. The, the Christians actually believe in Moses too. They believe in the Old Testament too. They believe in the Torah and so on too. But unfortunately, over time, we believe that there was some change that happened. And it is proven in history. That's not the topic. The topic is Ibrahim and how it comes down to the Joseph or Yusuf, may peace be upon him and why Allah took him as a friend. But this was just a side point of benefit because today when people believe because of my religion, I automatically qualify to be a citizen of a certain piece of land. If that was the case, the Christians, the birthplace of Jesus is Bethlehem. It would be correct for them if that was the case to say that we all should be living in Bethlehem. And how many billion are we? It would be right for the Muslims to say that we all need to be citizens of the same place because these messengers were all part of the Middle East. But nowhere in human history does it say that your religion qualifies you to become a citizen of a place. Allah chose where you will be born and 
perhaps by birth you may have certain qualifications because you're a human being and your access to this earth and the globe is similar to mine and similar to anyone else's. That's what makes you a human being and we're all equal. Islam teaches us that we're all like the teeth of a comb and nasu sawasiya ka asnan al It's an Islamic teaching. People are equal like the teeth of a comb. Have you ever seen a comb with one tooth missing? It's not going to do justice to your hair. So we're all the same. Now, Ibrahim alayhi salam is ours too. In fact, the whole Hajj and pilgrimage that we go to is connected primarily to Ibrahim and his sacrifice may peace be upon him. Allah took him as a friend because when he was young, he automatically began to ask questions when he saw his father doing things, not worshipping the creator alone. And he said, why is my father not worshipping his maker? Why is my father worshipping things that he found on earth or that he's making himself on earth? So he began to ask these questions and the father says, don't you dare ask. From this I learned that when my children ask me questions, I will not say, don't you dare ask. I will look for an answer. I look for a response. If I don't know the reply, I will go and find it and make sure I am the one who helps my child with the, with the answer. And then Ibrahim tells his father, oh, my father, knowledge has come to me that didn't come to you. So if you follow me, I'll guide you to the straight path. Was he telling a lie? No, he was not. Ya abati inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam yatik fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiyya Oh my father, knowledge came to me that didn't come to you. Follow me, I'll guide you to the straight path. Had the father followed his son, it would have solved the problem. But unfortunately, the father did not follow his son. Similarly, I learned today that if my son were to come to me or a younger person than myself and tell me you're going wrong here, you're supposed to look at this and that. Let me guide you. Let me show you if he is right. I'm going to listen to him. If I don't, I will fail in the same way Aza, the father of Abraham, may peace be upon him, failed. So we are taught as believers that a person younger than you can come up with something that you may need, can teach you, can be your teacher. It's fine for as long as there is something to learn that is valuable and correct and upright. So Ibrahim, as young as he was, he started searching and he found his maker. He said, when I look at the stars, they are not worthy of worship because they disappear. When I look at the moon, it's not worthy of worship because it disappears and some days it's there, some days it's not there. When I look at the sun, it's not worthy of worship because it only comes out during daytime and at night it's not there. So he says, I've turned my face, I turned my face to whom? To the one who created the skies and the earth. I turn my face in worship only to the one who made me. Allah loved that statement so much. So Allah tested him. You've recognized us. You have chosen to worship your maker alone with no partners. And you have said none is worthy of worship besides the one who made me. That statement carried through. It carried through all the way to Islam and the Muslims. We repeat the same statement of Ibrahim. There is none worthy of worship besides he who made me. La ilaha illallah. That's the meaning of the statement that will grant you entry into the fold of Islam. Where did it come from? It came from the very beginning. Adam alayhi salam. It was reiterated and repeated by all the messengers of Allah. All of them. Moses, Jesus, David, Solomon, Abraham, Lot. Job, Jacob, may peace be upon them all. They all said the same thing. None worthy of worship besides he who made you. Don't ever render any act of worship to anyone or anything besides the one who made you. That's the ultimate statement. So Allah loved it so much. Allah says, we are going to test you, O Ibrahim. We want you to do things. The fact that you know that the instruction comes from your maker is enough. Let's see, we want you to sacrifice your son. Did it make sense to him? 
No, it didn't. The only thing that made sense to him is, it's coming from my Lord. If it comes from my Lord, I'm going to fulfill it because it comes from my Lord. You and I know that the sacrifice is confirmed in Judaism, Christianity and Islam. The difference is who exactly it was. I'm not going to go into that debate, whether it was Ismail or Isaac, because the Muslims believe it was Ismail alayhi salam. And the Muslims say chronologically the other brother did not exist at the time. So it would have been impossible for it to be Isaac. But the Jews and the Christians say no, it was Isaac. Nonetheless, like I say, that's not the topic. I just mentioned it in passing that there is difference of opinion among the Semitic faiths. So when he started to adopt that and to follow the instruction of Allah, what happened? Allah replaced that with a ram to this day. We sacrifice in a similar fashion. The Hajj, what happens there is a sacrifice. We go and pelt. Is there a devil where we are pelting? The answer is no, there was a devil. So what's the point of pelting there? Because there was a devil, we are going to go there symbolically in order to follow the instruction of Allah and his messengers. We are going to say Allahu Akbar and pelt with pebble sized stones. And we would actually remove the devil from within in order to make ourselves better people how many bad habits do you have how many major bad habits do you have can you name them can you count them at least in your mind i can i have a few bad habits we all do because we're human beings sometimes a little bit bad some some of them require urgent dealing with and others are not that bad but they still would develop you as a person if you dealt with them and they would help you. So therefore, you need to identify your bad habits. When you go for Hajj, you come back as pure as the day you were born and even purer. And you come back clean. Why? Because when you went there, you took out the devil within and your bad habits. You left them there in Mina, where Ibrahim, may peace be upon him, saw the devil. So he pelted, he pelted the devil in reality. At that time, we go and we do the repetition of the pelting in order for us to develop ourselves. Allahu Akbar, and I've thrown a stone. The first day, seven pebbles. The idea, it's called the big shaitan, Jamra, the big one. You're, the major bad habits, take them out, eradicate them, work on them. Are you not a believer? You are. If you are, two things you need to do. Your relationship with your maker, number one, two, is your character, your conduct that is connected to how you will deal with the rest of the people you found on earth, whom you live with, whom you deal with, whom you live in their communities. How do you treat each other? That's part and parcel of your test on earth. If you're going to be a person who's only worried about yourself, your children, your family, you're not a good believer. You need to be concerned about the poor, the downtrodden, those who are struggling, our brothers, our sisters in Palestine today. We pray for them. We reach out to them. We believe that there is injustice being perpetrated against them. We believe that it is wrong to stop water, food, drink from people, from human beings. It's wrong to stop that from animals. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says a man and in another narration, there is a woman as well achieved paradise by quenching the thirst of an animal imagine what would happen by quenching the thirst of a human and imagine the opposite if a person was punished because they stopped water from a dog imagine what punishment would be served to a person who stops water from human beings not just one but millions of them and we claim to believe in the torah which torah are you talking about we claim that we follow the Talmud. Which Talmud are you talking about? Is there a verse in the Talmud or Torah that teaches you to block and stop water from animals, from human beings, which is far more important? Do you not fear the day you're going to return to your maker and mine? May Allah grant us ease. So we care. If you're a true believer, you care for humanity at large. When Allah speaks about saving lives in the Quran, He doesn't say a Muslim. He says, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves a single life, be it Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever it may be from wherever in the world, you save a single life, it's as though you've saved entire humanity because you served it. So this is the beauty of this goodness of the teachings. We need to develop our relationship with our maker in that we worship him alone, like I said earlier. We render our prayers to him. We call out to him. We do whatever he has asked us to do. But over and above that, he has asked us to develop ourselves 
in terms of those we live with. Do you think you are living in Zambia just as a coincidence? No. The Almighty chose it for you. That's why you are here. He will ask you, how did you contribute towards the development of your nation? Not just your home, not only your community. What did you develop? What did you do? Did you promote the goodness, the growth, the positivity? Did you guide people? Did you teach them? Did you invest in human resources? Did you invest in anything that would help others? And that's why we say, my brothers, my sisters, this issue of being charitable goes way beyond just your money. It's more important to develop your character towards others. You see someone, are you going to greet him with the same smile that you will, you will have when you greet another who perhaps belongs to a different race, perhaps belongs to somewhere else, another community maybe, another ethnic background perhaps. Why is it that we differentiate when we are Muslims? We are believers. You cannot be a true believer trying to impress the maker who made you when you know he made others as well, but you have no good relation with the others. Who are they? They are the creatures of the same maker you're trying to impress. Imagine someone trying to impress you today. And they don't have a good relationship with others whom you love, whom you are connected to. Will you be impressed by them? No, you won't. You won't be impressed by them. The reason is, they are not really trying to impress you. They are only serving themselves. I call on you. I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to make a change. Make a change in society and community by giving importance to everyone. The rich and the poor, the downtrodden, the white and the black, the yellow and the green, whoever they may be, wherever they may be, whoever they are, respect people. Offer them dignity. That is when you will be a true believer. Offer them the minimum that you can. And what is that? The minimum Allah wants of me is respect. What does a person want? I remember seeing a brother who was wealthy and he threw some money at a beggar. And the beggar looked at it and said, you know what? Keep your money. Why? He says, you can't just throw things. You offer me with respect, no matter what it is, we're going to take it. The respect is more than the amount. Remember this. May Allah bless us. Ibrahim alayhi salam at that time, whatever happened, Allah made it compulsory for us to go for Hajj. Have you been for Hajj? One of the reasons Allah Almighty has instructed us that you cannot dress how you want. You dress how we want to show you you're just equal. You don't know in this world you might have had whatever. If you didn't appreciate what you had, you may not have anything in the hereafter. How do I appreciate it? It must humble me. How powerful are you? Are you humble? Then you are powerful. How wealthy are you? Are you humble? Then you are wealthy. How famous are you? Are you humble? Then you are truly famous. It's humbleness, humility that's going to carry you forth. Allah says, yes, one is piety. Together with piety, all the piety will go down the drain if we don't have with us humility. Do you know where that comes from? Narration of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He says, do you know who is the bankrupt person? The companion said, well, he's a person who has no money, obviously, and perhaps he might be owing and so on. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says a bankrupt person is the one who comes on the day of judgment with a lot of good deeds, a lot of good deeds. But he abused this one, accused that one, perhaps deceived this one, ate the wealth of this one and did this to that one. So many others who lived at the same time as him or her were wronged by him or her. So when he comes on the day of judgment with a mountain full of good deeds, some go to this one, some go to that one. Another amount of good deeds go to the other one whom you wronged, that one whom you wronged until you're left with no more good deeds and you still have a line of people wanting justice because of the disservice that you did to them while you were on earth. And guess what happens then? Their bad deeds are taken and put onto your shoulder. I wouldn't like that to happen. I wouldn't like that to happen. So we're taught that let's learn to be humble. That Hajj connected to Ibrahim alayhi salam. It is supposed to teach us that all of us are going to go into the grave. When we go into the grave, can you say, because I have, so therefore I need green color of kafan. You know what's a kafan? A shroud. In Islam, you have to have a white shroud. Unless really there is no white shroud, then you can use something else as a last resort. But the sunnah is white. And you cannot say, I need you to bury me in my clothing and put my Rolex on and so on. It's not going to help you. A Rolex will not help you to roll into the hereafter, not at all. May Allah Almighty grant us ease.
You can have it in this world, no problem. You are allowed to enjoy. If Allah has blessed you with wealth, you are allowed to have the best of everything on condition that you are humble and you relate to Allah. You become closer to Allah. May Allah Almighty grant us the best of the dunya and the akhirah. You see, that was a very loud Amin because everyone wants money. Everyone wants wealth. Everyone wants to be rich. May Allah grant us wealth with goodness. That's it. I want wealth. We all want wealth, but we want it with goodness. We want it with respect and honor. And we want to be people. We promise Allah we will be charitable in two ways. Charitable with your character and charitable with your wealth. You know how to be charitable with your character. Just show your teeth. That's all. In Islam, if you show your teeth with a smile, you are already engaging in the charity that's considered monetary, although there's no money involved. Sadaqah. When I say give us a sadaqah, what does it mean? Many people would understand it as give me some money. But we want a sadaqah from you, meaning at least give me a smile. At least smile at me. Come on, you can't just look at me. You're a believer. You believe in Allah and as though, what's happening? Did you just see? What did you see here? Smile. Come on. Do you know when you smile, what happens? You empower yourself and you empower the others and you make life meaningful. People want to live because you are around. How many suicidal cases are there today where people say, I don't want to live any longer because life is becoming tough. It's not easy to survive in environments that are becoming more and more pressurizing in terms of the way we earn and spend. But when someone is smiling, they look at you, they greet you, they give you a small bit of recognition. Wallahi, you want to see them tomorrow again because they made you feel good. Am I right? Whereas the same time you can have someone who looks at you miserably, even if you're working there, even if you have to meet them every day because you see them in a masjid, for example. But a miserable look is something that breeds lots of negativity. Don't do that. Be positive, spread positivity. Do you follow the man known as Muhammad? Peace be upon him. If you do, smile. Your expression is an act of charity. Your character, your conduct. Do not underestimate greeting someone, asking them, how are you? How's your family? They might give you a story with tears. No one's asked me that question for the last five years. Because each one is worried about nafsi, nafsi from the dunya before the akhirah. Each one is worried about himself in this world before the next. How am I going to achieve things? I must show concern. I might not be able to give you the thousands or the millions or whatever, but I can greet you and give you importance, which is more valuable in the eyes of Allah. We learn from the Hajj. Here comes Ibrahim alayhi salam. He passed every single test that Allah tested him with. Every one of them. So Allah says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Allah considered him and took him as a close friend, Khalil. What's the name Khalil? It means the highest level of friendship. There we are, Khalil. I'm sure from amongst you, we have a few Khalils, right? MashaAllah, may Allah grant us goodness and friendship. Friend of Allah, why? Because he adopted the law of Allah without actually understanding it, knowing that it's going to bring back a lot of reward. It's a good thing. So he had a son, Ishaq, Isaac. He had some sons. One of them was Ishaq. Ishaq had a son. Ishaq was also a prophet of Allah. Tremendous story, beautiful history. Some of it is mentioned in the Quran, some in the narrations. And then we have his son, Jacob, Yaqub. May peace be on him. A beautiful story, amazing. He had so many children. Yaqub, his other name was Israel. It's mentioned in the Quran. His other name was Israel. So when you say prophet Israel, you are talking about Yaqub alayhi salam. You follow? He had children. He had 12 boys. The youngest was Yusuf, Joseph, may peace be upon him. The one slightly older than him was Binyamin or Benjamin. They were all gifted by Allah. Beautiful, handsome men. Guess what? Jealousy overtook them. So what do I learn? My brothers and sisters, jealousy is a disease. It is real. It happens even among brothers, family members. So be careful before you Look at others and say that man is jealous of me or that sister or woman is jealous of me. Ask yourself, am I jealous of someone else? Because many times what happens to us is we know that there is a disease called jealousy. We are suffering from it because we have it. But we think others are jealous of us. My man, you are the one who's jealous of everybody else. Don't listen. Be happy when Allah's given someone else things.
Be happy when Allah has blessed another person. You will find growth, spiritual growth, as well as physical growth in terms of your wealth and your sustenance because you are a happy person. With positivity, you will achieve great heights. With negativity, you're going to come crashing. You won't even enjoy what you have. You have sometimes you have a millionaire. He's jealous because another person is becoming a millionaire. Have you not seen people who have a massive store and another guy is moving with, with, a, with a wheelbarrow? Something similar is being sold in a wheelbarrow. And the guy comes out and says, hey, you're not allowed to sell this because I'm selling it here. Who are you? Are you worried about the sustenance of Allah? Are you really worried about this? No problem. You should be a person. If you're a true believer to say, listen, you want to come up, come to me. I'll give you stock. You can build and you can develop and you can open your own place. I want to see you grow. Then you are building your paradise because even brothers become jealous of one another. Do you know what they became jealous of when they saw Yusuf alayhi salam? Number one, he was quite good looking. Mashallah. The hadith says he was so handsome. Mashallah. Handsome Yusuf. They, 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 they're even little nursery songs that go like that. Handsome Yusuf, right? Handsome. He was so handsome. We all know Yusuf alayhi salam, good looking. The brothers became jealous, number one. Number two, the father used to keep him close to him because he was the youngest. I'm sure the father, who was a messenger of Allah, did not favor one over the other, but rather you were young. You cannot remember that your father treated you in the same way. But now that you're older and you're watching your father treating the little one with a lot of favor, you think, why didn't he do this to me? But he did. You don't have the memory of it. You're just watching the little one because they said, oh, Amazing verse where Allah is describing what the brothers said. They said, you know, Joseph and his brother Benjamin are more loved by the father than us. So what do we do? Imagine some of the brothers said, I'll just kill him. How can you say that? That's your brother. Why did Allah say this in the Quran? Allah said it for us to watch out, watch your heart. Don't let your hatred for the people make you go beyond the limits. You dislike someone, you should still be fair and just. Allah says in the Quran, don't ever let your dislike of people make you be unjust towards them. Be fair and just, even if you dislike some people or hate them. Be fair and just. It is best for your closeness to Allah. You want to be close to Allah? Be fair with everyone. I don't like you, but I'm going to be fair. In this particular thing, you are right. That's it. But these were brothers. They disliked. And on top of that, they decided, let's plan his downfall. The older brother felt a bit ashamed of that statement. He says, no, 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 don't kill the boy. You know what? Let's just get rid of him. Throw him into a pit or do something. And that's it. We won't see him again. They went to execute that. They actually lied to the father and said, Hey, send this little boy with us. We are his brothers. You know, we are tough. We're going to make him rough and tough. We're going to take him in order to perhaps teach him a thing or two and we will come back and he will have benefited. We will have benefited and so on. The father says, you know what? I fear that perhaps an animal might come and harm you guys. One of those wild animals, you know, a wolf or, a, or might come and attack. They said, no, how can that happen when we are there? Strong men. They were planning. They went and executed. They threw him in the pit. What did this man do? Now, I want to show you something because I'm sure nearly all of us are aware of the ending of the story. Look at how it started. A dream. The father says to Yusuf alayhi salam, you saw this dream, but don't tell it to your brothers. They may become jealous of you. The dream was that he saw 11 stars, the moon and the sun literally bow down to him, prostrate to him. He told his father, what does that mean? The father knew that this is, this means that Allah will elevate him above all of us. That's all. But he didn't say the meaning. He told him, don't say this to anyone. Keep it to yourself. And then everything they did was directly connected to his ultimate success. My brothers, my sisters, something negative happened to you today. 
another thing tomorrow, a third thing the following day. For as long as you are a believer and you maintain a positive mindset, Allah will ensure that the very negativity that you went through would directly result in your ultimate success of a door opening that you never ever imagined. So believe and Allah will give you. Believe and Allah will give you. Because we all go through negatives. I've been through negatives. You have. We probably are going through it right now. You might have lost a job. You might have lost a limb. Your health might be struggling. You might have so many crises. You might have a marital problem. You might have problem with your children, your siblings, your parents, whoever it may be, your spouse. You know what? Take it in your stride. Work hard. Do your best. Try to do whatever you believe would be pleasing to your maker and be determined greater days are coming happier days are coming many of us when something negative happens and another negative happens and a third negative happens and a fourth negative happens what do we start thinking shaitan comes to us and make us think maybe someone did magic on you right what do you call it in this country they call it juju where i come from straight what type of weak faith do you have you had four tests yusuf alayhi salam had seven he never ever said someone did something on me. No, he was determined the day will come when we will be granted victory. Victory is coming. When is it coming? I don't know. Victory is coming. For a believer, there is always victory. You are happy. Do you know why? What is your ultimate goal? Is it not paradise? Well, if you get paradise because of the patience you bore, because of the problems that Allah put in your life, it, does that not mean Allah gave you the ultimate victory? You might not have seen that happiness and joy on earth, but what is better to see 70 years of joy or to see eternity of millions and trillions of equivalents of days and years of the earth in joy? Which one is more valuable? So my brothers and sisters, take it in your stride. When we have negativity happening, sometimes we feel maybe Allah has forsaken us. Maybe Allah has left us. Well, I tell you, read Surah al duha Allah says, مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَالَ Allah is telling Muhammad, peace be upon him, your Lord has not forsaken you. He's not upset with you. No, these are tests that everyone has gone through. The Prophet Abraham went through tests. The Prophet Ayyub or Job, may peace be upon him, went through tests. They all went through tests. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam and the tests that he went through. Allah says, we did not forsake you, nor are we upset. It's part of our plan for you. Take it in your stride. If Allah has planned it for you, Alhamdulillah, it's okay. A day comes when you make a profit and you get something positive and good, Alhamdulillah. Something negative happens, Alhamdulillah. Praise your Lord. Because without that praise, you are never going to solve your problem. When we achieve a lot, sometimes we forget God Almighty. We forget Allah. Some people, when they have everything they want, they are far from Allah. So what does Allah do? If Allah loves you, He's going to tap you. How does He tap? Take away a few things. Sometimes take away your health. Sometimes take away a human being whom you love so much, taken back by Allah. What happened? My life changed. Is that not a sign of the love of Allah? Your negativity was actually a positive. Where are you today? Are you not a person who's a little bit more conscious of your maker? If the answer is yes, that means whatever happened in your life was good. It was good for you. You came closer, didn't you? It's amazing. My brothers, my sisters, your Lord has not forsaken you. No, is he upset with you? He didn't forget you. No, he knows you. And Allah says, Always remember, you're a believer. Your hereafter is going to be far better than this life. You know, people ask me, how come because I'm a believer, I get tested? What about those who don't believe? They're not getting tests. Well, there's one simple answer to that. It's quite deep. If you think of it, although it sounds extremely simple, who do you test when you're a school teacher? Those in your classroom or those on the street? Who do you test? You entered the classroom, you enrolled, you paid the fee, you said, I believe, you learned, they showed you everything. They told you this is right, this is wrong. Now, come examination, you're going to have to sit here and write the exam. I can't go to the street and say, guys, come write the exam. We're writing all levels here, by the way, GCSE, top exam, come and write it. They'll say, we didn't enroll in your college. They won't be tested. You are tested because Allah says, what does Allah say? Surah Al-Ankabut. 
أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون Do people think that it's enough? It's okay to say I'm a believer and then tests won't come into their lives? In fact, when you say you're a believer, then the tests begin to come to test you. Are you genuine? Are you not? Didn't we start off by telling you about Prophet Abraham? May peace be upon him when he discovered and recognized his maker and decided I worship you and you alone. Allah says, are you serious? If you are serious, we're going to test you. Do you love us in difficulty? Yes. Do you love us in hardship? Yes. Do you love us? Are you humble when we give you? Yes. Amazing. The Prophet Abraham with him who believed very few. But today there are billions of people who connect to him. The Jews, the Christians, the Muslims are just some that I've mentioned. They relate to Ibrahim so much. So there was an argument. Was he Jewish or Christian? The Quran says, well, Judaism and Christianity came after him. So how could you drop him into one of those boxes? That's what the Quran says. Amazing. So we will go through challenges. I'm going to be tested. I entered the college and here, here I am. Are you ready for the test? By the help of Allah. Oh Allah, do not test us with tests that will be too difficult for us to pass. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, Yusuf alayhi salam, thrown into the pit and then they picked him up alive. That was a positive, wasn't it? He was alive. He didn't die. So that was a positive. He recognized the positive. He thanks Allah for it. But then again comes a new problem. The people who picked him up wants to, wanted to sell him to make money. Today, anything you find, you say, hey, how much money will I make if I buy this? Right? I get this. Will I make money? Will I not make money? They found a guy. They found a boy. Yeah, Bushra. Hada Ghulam. Hey, yeah, I found a young boy. Let's go sell him on the street. A'udhu Billah. Come May on. Allah safeguard us. They ended up selling him. He began to work. The woman of the house had a bad intention. And she tried to spoil his name. She wanted him to do that, which was wrong. Another negative. What did he say? This is another lesson for me. This is why Allah says it's the best of stories. It has the most lessons than any other story of any other prophet. May Allah's peace be upon all of them. You sometimes you might be falsely accused. It's okay. You're not the first one and you will not be the last one. They accuse people better than you of crimes worse than what you are being accused of. They took it in their stride. Allah's help came to them. You are not as grand as Yusuf, nor am I. And we've not been accused with something bigger than what he's been accused of. So if Allah helped him, the same Allah is going to help me. I have the faith and conviction. Matter of time. They jailed him falsely. They may do that to you and I. Falsely. Some of the people around believed it, but most of them knew that this is just a lie. What happened? Allah says that was our beloved. A prophet, a son of a prophet, a son of a prophet, a son of a prophet who was our bosom, meaning who was so close to us, our friend. Like I said, Khalil of Allah, he went through the challenges. Don't worry, the door is opening. In Surah al sharh which is just after Surah Al-Duha, Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى You know how powerful those verses are? For indeed, with hardship, there is ease. And with that hardship, there is another ease. If you know the Arabic language well, you know what is ma'rifa and nakira, and you know the use of the terms. Al-usr is referring to the same hardship. And yusr is referring to a new point of ease. When one door closes, two will open. Are you not a person who has faith in Allah? Someone fired you and you lost your job. You can't find another one or you looked for it so many times you got it and lost it and got it and lost it. Perhaps Allah wants you to work yourself as an entrepreneur where you will make more money than all seven of those people who fired you together. It's possible. It has happened. You read stories of people who passed and succeeded. Sometimes it was not the first time they but they were determined. They had a positive mindset. They developed their link with Allah to the best of their ability. That's when whatever you are going to get is going to be blessed. You get it with blessing. How do you know that what I have, is it a blessing or a punishment? Because I have a lot. Well, it's quite easy. If two things have happened to you, then it's a blessing. And if any one of those things are missing, then it's not a blessing. It could be a punishment. What are those two things? If it brought you, if your gift brought you closer to your maker, 
That's one point. And secondly, if it made you humble and helped you in your character and conduct, when those two have come together, whatever you have is a gift of Allah. You should thank him. You are a humble soul. You are a lovely person. People love to be in your company. And who loves to be in your company? The downtrodden, those who perhaps have no one else. Look at Nabi Muhammad, peace be upon him, and all the messengers, including Jesus, may peace be upon him, who were his circle. Were they not people who were downtrodden when the kuffar of Quraysh, the cronies of Quraysh at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw that the people who've accepted Islam are Bilal ibn Rabah and Khabbab ibn al-Arat, radiyallahu anhum and the others. You know what they said? They said, we will accept your religion on condition that you all these poor people, you kick them out, you chase them away, we will come in. Allah says, وَلَا تَطُرُدِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجْهَ Allah says, no way are you going to chase people away from you who are serving Allah, who are worshipping Allah. Don't ever chase them away. You want to come? Come. You don't want to come? It's okay. We're not going to change things because of you. May Allah grant us humbleness. May Allah bless all of us. My brothers and sisters, Yusuf alayhi salam, at the end, Allah gave him an opportunity to clear his name with the women who accused him. And Allah gave him izza and Allah gave him rank and respect to the degree that at a time of severe need of the nation, he was made in charge of the granaries. What were the granaries? It's like someone being made a minister of finance. It's like someone who has been made a person in charge of all the wealth here. Allah gave him that to the degree that his brothers had to come begging from him. His brothers had to come begging from him. So my brothers and sisters, we were saying Yusuf alayhi salam was given an opportunity to clear whatever he was accused of and to clear the air to the degree that when his brothers came, they had to beg for food at the hands of the person whom they thought was already eradicated. And how did Yusuf alayhi salam arrive at that point? Direct result of the planning of these boys. If they did not plan that, he wasn't going to be there. You see, so don't worry when people plan your downfall. If you are determined and you have faith, Allah will grant you a day when he will raise you above them because he did it before and he's going to do it again. And he always does it. And what I learned from this is I must never ever be a vehicle of the downfall of someone else. I would either empower them based on my teachings or I may not be able to do anything, but I'm not going to harm them. You harm someone, you pay for it. You don't realize how you pay for it within yourself, within your children, within your families. Sometimes it might filter through to the hereafter, which is even more dangerous. So Yusuf alayhi salam's brothers come in and he asks them a strange question. He asks them a strange question. And from that question, he said to them, do you know what you guys did to Yusuf when you were ignorant, when you weren't even thinking properly? Do you know what you did to Yusuf and his brother? They were shocked because according to them, nobody knew what happened to Yusuf and to Yusuf in particular. No one knew. So it can't be anyone else. It must be this must be Yusuf. And the Quran asks, I mean, the Quran mentions the question that was asked. Innaka la anta Yusuf. Is it that you are that Yusuf? Is it that you are Yusuf? He, what happened? Imagine he's there in charge of the food and the granaries and he's telling these young men, 10 of them, you know, big men, handsome guys, mashallah. And they are his half brothers, but he's asking them, do you know what you guys did? And they're looking and say, are you Yusuf? Are you the one? That was his moment. He could have done anything he wanted. Anything he wanted. You know what he says? He says, Ana Yusuf wa hadha akhi qad Allahu alayna. Indeed, I'm Yusuf. This is my brother. Allah has favored us. Allah has favored us. He didn't talk about what you did. No. 
He talked about what Allah did. Never mind what you did. What you did was actually part of the favor. That's what it was. If you didn't do this, I wasn't going to be favored today. So he says, قَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا You know what he says? إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرُ Whoever has two qualities, sabr and taqwa, patience and God consciousness. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah will never forsake. The reward of those, Allah will never leave or Allah will never waste the reward of those who do good. Never. You get your reward, but be patient. Then he says, they, they told him, oh, we're sorry. Before even they could say much more, he told them, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم Don't worry, no retribution against you today. It's okay, it's okay. Leave it. You know why? Allah gave me more than you. What should I worry about you guys? Why should I hold it against you? It's like what we say. Yusuf alayhi salam was swimming in the ocean and his brothers were only stuck at the river that they were at. Why must he worry about the water they are at when he's in the ocean? He told him, no, it's okay. Don't even mention it, man. What are you talking about? لا تثريب عليكم اليوم يغفر الله لكم May Allah forgive you. It's okay. I'm praying that Allah forgive you. You wronged against me, but it's fine. That is Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah blessed him way beyond the others because they were planning his downfall. Allah says, that's not how we work. We are the givers. We give, not you. We raise this man above you simply because you planned his downfall. And then Allah Almighty says that Yusuf alayhi salam says, it's okay, go and get your father, our father, and bring him along. And the father comes along and mashallah, the story continues where everyone is happy. And the father says, that was the meaning of the dream. I tell you, my brothers, my sisters, Allah Almighty tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبَرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in the stories of every single messenger, Allah says there are lessons for those with sound intellect. They went through challenges, so will I, so will you. They bore patience, so will I, so will you. They had victories, so will I have, so will you have. It's okay if they who were better than you and I went through more than you and I and victory came to them, inshallah, it will come to us too. Bear patience. These are the stories. This is one of the stories of the many stories mentioned in the Quran. And Allah Almighty tells it to us so that we can remain humble, so that we can be hopeful. Today we are living in an age where people are struggling, like I've said. Struggling for many reasons. There is a lot of pressure. Economies of nations are very, very challenging. It's not so easy to earn and it's not so easy to live. And social media makes it no easier because we've lived or we're now living in the life of competition and comparison, which is very dangerous for a believer. Do not compare. Don't compete with others. Compete with your own self. I want to be today better than I was yesterday. As for you, it's your race. I'm not running that race. I'm running my own race. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Be happy with what Allah has given you. Be satisfied with it. Because many times we have what is sufficient, but we are looking for that which we don't have simply because we think other people have it. Yet sometimes they are only photoshopping, a, photoshopping it for us to see. You know, we're living in an age, I was talking about jealousy, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, where some people intentionally want to make you jealous of something they themselves do not have. They don't have it. Haven't you seen people, you see a lovely car. Can I take a photo with the car? For what? For what? It's not your car. Leave it. Who do you want to show? You want to show them you own a Lamborghini. You don't even own the Gini. Forget about the Lambo. Allahu Akbar. Allah grant us easy. Allah grant us goodness and ease in this world and the next. It's true. Why? We're showing off. You want to make people jealous. You see my car. What car? That's not even your car. We just saw you standing next to it and that's it. People do the same with so many other things. We Photoshop, we edit, we show that we are in places we never ever visited. For what? Just to show off. Wallahi, we don't need that. We are believers, don't show off. Live your real life, be happy. Be happy with what the Almighty has given you. Be happy with your little vehicle, so what? Be happy with your humble home. Allah grants you more joy than a home that might be looking like a huge palace. But if there is no barakah and blessing in that home, 
Trust me, it was better to live under the tree that you might have been living in with joy, happiness, contentment and love than to live in a palace where it's void of love. It's void of happiness, no contentment. Everybody is screaming and yelling at each other. What's the point? Do you want to hear something shocking? When I was talking to a group of youngsters in a country, in a developed country, do you know what the youngsters told me? They said, I really don't mind living with screaming, shouting and abuse for as long as I have that type of a house. And I said, look at where we've gotten to. Imagine, what did I say just now? I said, if Allah has given you goodness, happiness, love, joy, contentment, respect, it's far better than having a huge palace. There are some people who say, no, 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 give me the palace, it's okay. I don't mind. Why? Because we're living in a fake world where we want to show off. Showing off gets you nowhere. May Allah Almighty protect all of us and grant us goodness. I've spoken for as long as I had intended to speak. And I thank Allah for giving us this opportunity to meet all of you. I would have loved to greet every single person. But you and I know with the thousands that are here today at this beautiful Metro Club, it is impossible. Nonetheless, may Allah bless you all. You have come from afar. Allah has granted us great weather. Allah has given us such lovely ambience. I see beautiful faces. We are all seated. Many are standing. Wallahi, I acknowledge you. May Allah bless you. Allah give you barakah in your own homes, in your lives, in your health, in your deen, in your religion, in your dunya, your life. And may Allah Almighty grant you the best of this world and the next. Amen. So a dua I offer you. You can offer me a dua as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from me the few words that I've uttered. May Allah keep us humble and keep us sincere to Him. And may Allah Almighty protect all of us from harm. I end by reminding you of our brothers and sisters across the globe who are struggling. Make it a habit to pray for them every day, to reach out to them no matter where they are. Today, there are people in Afghanistan who are struggling because of an earthquake that you might not even have heard of. It was not just one, but there were more than one earthquakes. People have lost their homes. They don't, they, they don't even know what they're going to do. Similarly, our brothers, our sisters in Palestine, I mentioned them already in the talk, but I repeat, my brothers, my sisters, we stand for them. We stand by them. We believe that it is against human rights. It is absolutely incorrect, wrong and unacceptable to stop water, food, drink and necessities from human beings. We as Muslims and believers believe that it is prohibited to block water from animals, let alone human beings. So we ask Allah to bless them, to grant them ease, to give them victory upon victory. And we ask Allah to be there for them, for indeed we stand with the downtrodden wherever they are on the globe, be they in Sudan or Somalia. If I name the countries, it's the list is endless. We know. And better than us, Allah knows everyone who's struggling, even from amongst us. There are some in our own communities who are struggling. We reach out to them tonight. Brothers, sisters, we love you for the sake of Allah. We may not be able to be there the way you want us to be there, but we offer you a prayer. May Allah alleviate your suffering. May Allah grant you cure. May Allah grant mercy to those who've passed on from your families and make it easy for you to overcome that loss or to bear it with patience. And may Allah Almighty grant us a unity and a bond in a way that we serve each other. We develop our communities and our nation and that development inshallah will spill over by the will of Allah into my country to Zimbabwe. And inshallah we hope that we can see growth, positive growth at a time when there is nothing but negativity on earth. May Allah grant us that positivity. I refuse to become negative with the negatives. I want to remain positive. And inshallah, by the help of Allah, I will, and so will you.